Wagaman, also spelled Wageman, Wakaman, Wogman, Wakaman, is a near-extinct indigenous Australian language spoken by fewer than ten people in and around Pine Creek, in the Catherine region of the Northern Territory. The Wagaman language is notable within linguistics for its complex system of verbal morphology, which remains under-investigated, its possession of a cross-linguistically rare part of speech called a coverb, its complex predicates and for its ability to productively verbalize coverbs. Wagaman is expected to become extinct within the first half of the century, as the youngest generation of Wagaman people speak no Wagaman at all, and understand very little. Language and speakers Wagaman is a language isolate. It was once assumed to be a member of the adjacent Gunwinegon family that stretches from Arnhem Land, throughout Kakadu National Park and south to Catherine. However, there was considerable debate about the status of Wagaman within the Gunwinegon family. Wagaman is the ancestral language of the Wagaman people, Aboriginal Australians whose traditional land, before colonization, extended for hundreds of square kilometres from the Stewart Highway, throughout the mid Daly Basin, and across the Daly River. The land is highly fertile and well watered, and contains a number of cattle stations, on which many members of the ethnic group used to work. These stations include Clarivale, Dorisvale, Jindare, Ulu, and Douglas. The language region borders Ware to the north, Mayali Gunwinigu, and Jawin on the east, Wardaman and Jaminjing on the south, and Moran Patha, Nan. Giwumiri and Malik Malik on the west. Before colonization, the lands surrounding Pine Creek, extending north to Brock. S. Creek, were traditionally associated with another language group that is now extinct, believed to have been Wolwulam. Current situation The dominant language of the region is Mayali, a dialect of Bininj Gun Wak traditionally associated with the region surrounding Maningrida, in western Arnhem land. As it is a strong language with hundreds of speakers and a high rate of child acquisition, members of the Wagaman ethnic group gradually ceased teaching the Wagaman language to their children. As a result, many Wagaman people speak Mayali, while only a handful of elders, possibly no more than six, speak Wagaman. The adults in the community are considered semi-speakers as they have a passive understanding of Wagaman and generally only know a few basic words. Their children, the grandchildren of the elders, understand very little Wagaman and speak none. Apart from Mayali, Creole, a Creole language based on the vocabulary of English, is the lingua franca of the area. All members of the Wagaman ethnic group, as well as all other ethnic groups represented in the area, are native speakers of a moderate grade of Creole. The small number of Wagaman speakers are also partial speakers of a number of other languages besides Mayali, including Jaminjing, Wardaman and Dagaman. Dialects Wagaman speakers are conscious of a distinction between two dialects of Wagaman, which they refer to as Matjan no Roma, light language, and Matjan gu no jan, heavy language. The differences are minor and speakers have no difficulty understanding one another. Wagaman grammar all grammatical information from Wilson, S. 1999, unless otherwise noted. Parts of speech The three most important parts of speech in Wagaman are verbs, coverbs and nominals. Apart from these, there are a multitude of verbal and nominal affixes, interjections and other particles. Pronouns class with nominals. Nominals like many Australian languages, Wagaman does not categorically distinguish nouns from adjectives. These form one word class that is called nominals. Wagaman nominals take case suffixes see below, that denote their grammatical or semantic role in the sentence. The grammatical cases are ergative and absolutive, and the semantic cases include instrumental, using, allative towards, ablative from, locative at, commutative with, having, privative without, lacking, temporal at the time of, and semblative resembling. The dative case can be either grammatical or semantic, depending on the syntactic requirements of the verb. Demonstratives are similarly considered nominals in Wagaman, and take the same case suffixes depending on their semantic and syntactic roles, their function within the sentence. That is, the demonstrative man. This. Or. Here. Root, may, may take case just like any other nominal. 
May ye this erg. This one did it. May ga this all. To hear. Examples of nominals. Guda. Fire. Wood. Da. Weirin. Tree. Stick. Own. Logiban. Man. Laban. Gordal. Head. Ah. Lagarini. Tail. La. Maningardal. Tongue. Ma. Pronouns. Pronouns are typologically nominals also, yet their morphosyntactic alignment is nominative accusative rather than ergative absolutive. The third person singular and plural nominative forms, nagongega and bogo, are labeled rare because they are gradually becoming disused. Speakers prefer to use non personal pronouns such as gay, that, or gay Gordon, those. Moreover, since the person and number of the subject is contained in the prefix of the verb, nominative free pronouns are often dropped. Tripartite alignment While the nominal case system distinguishes the ergative case from absolutive, the free pronouns distinguish nominative from accusative, as shown above. However, they inflect for ergative case as well, resulting in a tripartite case system, as in the following the nominative pronoun root in this instance, nagan, I, takes the ergative case suffix ye to denote the fact that it is the agent of a transitive clause. Conversely, the same pronoun does not take the ergative case when acting as the argument of an intransitive clause. The accusative pronouns on the other hand, may be accusative or dative, depending on the syntactic requirements of the verb. In the traditional terminology, these pronouns can be either direct or indirect objects. For these reasons, the pronouns are also labeled base for nominative ergative pronouns, and oblique for accusative dative pronouns. Genitive pronouns In the table above, genitive pronouns all end with jin, which is separated orthographically by a hyphen that normally divides morphemes. The jin form here is not a separate morpheme and cannot be lexically segmented. There is no such word as noning that would be formed by removing jin from noning jin. My, mine. The fact that the genitive forms have regular endings across the entire pronoun paradigm may have been a historical accident. This cannot be a nominal suffix like those listed above, since it may not attach to other nominals, asterisk war and jin lari. The child. S hand. Furthermore, the genitive pronouns may take a further case suffix, as in the example. This would be prohibited by the restriction against case stacking in Wagaman if the genitive jin were a case suffix. Verbs. Verbs are a class of word in Wagaman which contains fewer than 50 members. As it is a closed class, no more verbs are possible. They are often monosyllabic verb roots and all are vowel final. Wagaman verbs obligatorily inflect for person and number of core arguments, and for the tense and aspect of the clause. A small set of verbs may take a non-finite suffix yh, in which it may not be further inflected for person or tense. That non-finite verb must then co-occur with another auxiliary verb. Examples of verbs Each verb is listed with its past tense marker, which is the second morpheme. Pronunciation given where appropriate. Boo ni. Hit. Dnya. Come. Ra ndi. Throw. Rinyi ra. Fall. Nanda ye. See. Nanda. Unigani. B. J. Coverbs. There are so far over 500 recorded coverbs in Wagaman, and more are discovered with continuing research. Compared with verbs, coverbs are far more numerous and far more semantically rich. Verbs express simple, broad meanings such as you, be, ya, go, and d, come, while coverbs convey more specific, semantically narrow meanings such as barnbarn barn na, make footprints. 
Lerdong na, play a dijeridu, or mer ma, wade through shallow water using your feet to search for something. Cuburbs, however, cannot inflect for person and cannot, in themselves, head finite clauses. If they are to act as the head of a clause, they must combine with a verb, thereby forming a bipartite verbal compound, commonly called a complex predicate. Examples of coverbs Each is listed with the ma suffix, or its alamor, which signals aspectual unmarkedness. Liri ma. Swim. Elma. Dabale ma. Go. Around. Dabalima. Gore ma. Fish. Irma. Dipper ta. Jump. Dibia. Were na. Whistle. Werna. Phonology and orthography The Wagaman phonemic inventory is quite typical for a Northern Australian language. It has six places of articulation with a stop and a nasal in each. There are also a number of laterals and approximants, a trill and a phonemic glottal stop represented in the orthography by H. Wagaman also has a vowel inventory that is standard for the north of Australia, with a system of five vowels. Consonants Stops that are fortis, or strong, are differentiated from those that are lenis, or weak, on the basis of length of closure, as opposed to the voice onset time, BOT, the period after the release of the stop before the commencement of vocal fold activity, or voice, which normally differentiates fortis and lenis stops in English and most other languages. Lenus stops in Wagaman sound like English voiced stops and are therefore written using the Roman alphabet letters B, D and G. Fortis stops, however, sound more like voiceless stops in English, but are slightly longer than Lenus stops. They are written with two voiceless letters, PP, TT and KK when they occur between two vowels. Since the length of closure is defined in terms of time between the closure of the vocal tract after the preceding vowel, and the release before the following vowel, stops at the beginning or end of a word do not have a fortis lenis contrast. Orthographically in Wagaman, word initial stops are written using the voiced Roman letters, B, D and G, but at the end of a word, voiceless letters, P, T and K, are used instead. Vowels as with many languages of the top end, Wagaman has a standard five-vowel system. However, a system of vowel harmony indicates that two sets of vowels are closely associated with each other. Aligns closely with, and similarly, merges with. In this respect, it is possible to analyze Wagaman's vowel inventory as historically deriving from a three-vowel system common among the languages from further south, but with the phonetic influence of a typically northern five-vowel system. Phonotactics Each syllable of Wagaman contains an onset, a nucleus and an optional coda. This may be generalized to the syllable template C V C. The coda may consist of any single consonant, a continuant and a glottal stop, or an approximant and any stop. At the word level, Wagaman has a bimoric minimum, meaning that if a word consists of a single syllable, it must have either a long vowel or a coda. Examples of monosyllabic words in Wagaman include yao, j, yes, or jamh, m, eat, perf. The retroflex approximant, r is not permitted word initially and instead becomes a lateral l this only affects verb roots as they are the only part of speech that takes prefixes and are therefore the only possible part of speech for which word initial and word medial environmental effects can be observed the verb ra ndi throw for instance surfaces as la ndi when inflected for third person singular subjects he she it which are realized by invisible or null morphemes but as na ra ndi when inflected for a first person singular subject i when preceded by a syllable with a coda the r similarly moves to l as in non la ndi he she it through you in short the retroflex approximant r is only realized as r when it occurs between two vowels. 
Elsewhere, it becomes a lateral approximant. L. Heterorganic clusters Consonant clusters across syllable boundaries do not assimilate for place in Wagaman as they do in many other languages. This means that a nasal in a syllable coda will not move to the position of the following syllable onset for ease of enunciation. In English and most other Indo-European languages, this movement occurs regularly, such that the prefix in, for example, changes to im when it precedes either a p, a b or an m, in plus possible impossible, in plus balance imbalance, in plus material immaterial wageman does not do this. A nasal in a coda retains its position regardless of the following consonant Maningardal tongue ma binkin bream fish speck banan non buni s he hit me Anban, if Wagaman constrained against heterorganic clusters and assimilated them for place, as English does, these words would surface as ma, ban, and amban. Vowel harmony High vowels assimilate in height to following mid vowels across syllable boundaries. That is, will become and will become when the following syllable contains a mid vowel, either t or t. Me, 2sg, imp, and ge. Put becomes meej. You go and put it. Mu two place imp and yobi. Stay becomes moyobi. You lot stay. Wagaman vowel harmony and other aspects of Wagaman phonotactics require further investigation. It is not known, for instance, whether vowel harmony equally affects unstressed syllables. Syntax Wagaman is a prefixing language, which, in the context of typology of Australian languages, may refer to its genealogical classification as well as its syntactic properties. Wagaman, along with other Gunwinigan languages, inflects verbs for person and number of the subject obligatorily, and optionally for the object. In this respect Wagaman displays characteristics of a head-marking language. However, Wagaman also behaves as a dependent marking language, in that nominals are case marked as to their grammatical or semantic roles, such as ergative the subject of a transitive clause, or absolutive the object of a transitive clause or the subject of an intransitive clause. Morphology Wagaman is a morphologically rich language and each part of speech has its own set of associated bound morphemes, some of which are obligatory, while others are optional. Verbs The verbal prefix contains information about the person and number of the subject, sometimes also the person and number of the object, as well as obligatory information about the tense of the clause. Furthermore, a verbal suffix conveys further information regarding tense and aspect. While only a small number of tense and aspect affixes exist, the interplay between those in the verbal prefix and in the suffix, can generate more highly specified temporal and aspectual clauses. Further to these affixes, verbs may be marked for the number of the subject, be it dual or plural, and also for clusivity, whether the listener is included in the described event, inclusive, or is excluded from the event, exclusive. Verb morphology in Wagaman is highly irregular. Of the small inventory of inflecting verbs, many have their own unique tense suffixes, while other tense suffixes are common to several verbs, and while some rudimentary verb classes can be identified, stance verbs always take the past tense suffix nagani. For instance, the tense suffixes must be learned for each individual verb. The prefixes on the other hand, are regular for each verb, although the complete paradigm of verb prefixes is highly complex. They encode three variables, person, number and tense, and are not segmentable. One prefix cannot be separated into the three parts. Nani for example, encodes second person singular agent. You. First person singular patient, undergoer. Me. As well as past tense. Nominals. Nominal morphology is significantly less complex than that of the verb. There are a number of case suffixes, denoting ergative, absolutive, dative, allative, locative, ablative, semblative, temporal, instrumental and so on. 
Apart from the grammatical cases, ergative and absolutive, which are necessary to construct meaningful sentences, an entire range of semantic cases occur with very high frequency, even when their meaning can be expressed without using case. In the following examples, the former, in which no case is used, is far less common than the latter. There are also some bound particles, which appear to function in much the same syntactic manner as cases, but which are not considered case. For theoretical reasons, Biniju, B. Only. Is one of these nominal particles, as in. Nominals are also marked for number with a suffix that adjoins directly to the root, inside the case suffix. Giwu. 2. For example, would attach to the nominal root before the case, as in. As cases cannot be stacked in Wagaman, these number suffixes cannot be called case suffixes, whereas the nominal suffixes discussed above such as Biniju only show the same syntactic distribution, they occur in the same place, and therefore may be analyzed as cases themselves. Coverbs Coverbs also have their own set of inflectional morphemes, such as aspect, but may also take semantic case suffixes, all those listed above except for ergative and absolutive. For instance, a coverb may take the dative case to convey intention, or purpose, as in Coverbs are categorially differentiated from nominals though, in that a nominal may not take the aspectual suffixes that a coverb obligatorily takes. The morpheme that is glossed as aspect in the above example, referred to in the literature as the ma suffix, denotes aspectual unmarkedness. Its absence signifies perfective aspect, and it may be further suffixed with yan, producing ma yan, to denote continuous or imperfective aspect. The ma suffix exhibits regular allomorphy, it assimilates in place and manner of articulation to any preceding obstruent or nasal, but not to any preceding lateral, rhotic or approximant. That is, it remains ma following vowels, or following the consonants r, l, w, and j, but when it follows p, for instance, it assimilates in manner and place, and becomes pa, as in du pa. Sit. Liri plus ma liri ma wall plus ma wall ma bay plus ma bay ma yarani plus ma yarani nya DATJ plus ma DATJ jth inclusion of the glottal stop in certain words, is ineffective to the surface realization of the ma suffix, it will change, or remain unchanged, according to whichever segment precedes the glottal stop, as in WUNH plus ma WUNH na Gay plus ma gay macross linguistically, the ma suffix may be related to a coverbial suffix in Jiminjing, a language in which coverb roots occur without any aspect markers, but are then suffixed with mayan, which marks continuous aspect. This coverb suffix bears a striking resemblance to the sum of the wagaman ma suffix and the continuous aspect suffix yan, which always occur in tandem on coverbs. Together, ma and yan perform the same semantic function as Jiminjing mayan. Precisely what the relationship holds between these suffixes, whether one language borrowed from the other, or whether each language inherited them from earlier languages, is not at all clear. Reduplication Further to derivational and inflectional morphemes, wagaman coverbs and nominals often undergo reduplication, whereby a part, or often the entirety of the root, is repeated. Reduplication can convey a multitude of meanings. When coverbs are reduplicated, the resulting derived coverb may involve added meaning components such as iterativity, duration or habituality. When nominals are derived by reduplication, the added meaning is usually one of plurality. However, since both a dual and a plural nominal suffix exist, giwu and guju respectively, nominal reduplication is rare. Complex predicates a complex predicate is the combination of more than one element, more than one individual word, to convey the information involved in a single event. For instance, the event swim is conveyed in Wagaman using a combination of a verb ya, go, and a coverb liri ma, swimming. There is no verb in Wagaman that, on its own, conveys the event of swimming. Bipartite verbal compounds such as these are not peculiar to any language in particular. 
They are in fact very common, and may even occur in every language, albeit with varying frequency. English has a number of complex predicates, include go sightseeing, have breakfast and take a bath. The event described by go sightseeing is unable to be described using a single verb sightsee. Inflections like sightsaw and sightseen are ungrammatical. An event like take a bath, however, may be described by a single verb bathe, but it arguably has a slightly different meaning. Take a bath, in any case, is far more common. Verbalization wagaman is differentiated from other Australian languages in that it has a regular and productive process of verbalization, whereby coverbs can become verbs and act as the independent head of a clause. Despite being fully productive, meaning that all coverbs may undergo verbalization, in practice only a handful of coverbs are commonly verbalized. The process appears to be unique to Wagaman within Australian languages. Verbalization involves re analyzing the entire cover, including its suffix ma, which serves merely to indicate that it is unmarked for aspect, as a verb root, and then to apply the usual obligatory verbal inflection affixes for person, number, and tense. As there is no discrete morpheme that serves as a verbalizer, the process is one of conversion. See also complex predicates coverbs gunwinigan languages light verbs non pamanyungan languages notes references but m the light verb jungle Harvard working papers in linguistics 9 to 1-49 2003 Bowern Claire how many languages were spoken in Australia 2011 Carrington Lois and Geraldine Triffitt OZBIB a linguistic bibliography of aboriginal Australia and the Torres Strait Islands Canberra, Australian National University, 1999. Cook, Anthony R. Wagaman Madian, A Description of the Wagaman Language of the Northern Territory. PhD thesis. Melbourne, La Trobe University, 1987. Evans, Nicholas. Bininj Gun Wok, A Pan Dialectal Grammar of Mayali, Kunwinjku and Kun. Volumes 1 and 2. Canberra, Pacific Linguistics, 2003. ISBN 0-85883-530-4 Harvey, Mark. Western Gunwinigan. In Nicholas Evans, ed. The Non-Pamanyungan Languages of Northern Australia, Comparative Studies of the Continent's Most Linguistically Complex Region, 285-303. Canberra, Pacific Linguistics, 2003. ISBN 0-85883-538-X Merlin, Francesca C. A. Grammar of Wardaman, A Language of the Northern Territory of Australia. Berlin, Mouton de Gruyter, 1994. ISBN 3-11-012942-6 Wilson, Aidan. Negative Evidence in Linguistics, The Case of Wagaman Complex Predicates. The University of Sydney, 2006. Wilson, Stephen. Coverbs and Complex Predicates in Wagaman. Stanford, CLSI Publications, 1999. ISBN 1-57586-172-0. Wilson, Stephen. The Language and Its Speakers Wagaman Online Dictionary. Canberra, AIATSIS, 2001. 